Okay. I like to give all honors, our will to Most High God, how will the Baha Shem, how much Shia can All right. And this lesson is about to be going over, going over rebuking the laziness. All right. So we're going to get into the scriptures, showing you how we need to come out of this lazy. Right. So I'm going to bring out, bring out that scripture. Which one you want first? I want the uh, captain right here. Right. Come on. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse ten. Wherefore, the rather, mm -hmm. brethren. Give diligence and make every calling and election sure. Mm -hmm. For if ye for if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. All right. So you ain't gonna fail making your calling so sure, like making sure that everything is good, right? So before you get the matter of the calling, know what's going on. That's what you need to know, right? Get that uh, second ad. Oh, let's get this out right. So God, this is Sirach chapter twenty-two and verse one. It says a slothful man is compared to a, to a filthy stone. So like it. So it's saying a sloth uh, a slothful man is compared to a filthy stone, right? You can compare that to like what's going on in the world. Like you got all right, you got people in the streets. They bum. They you know you want to they always asking for money and things like that. Nah, they ain't trying to deal with you because you ain't you, you know, get a get a job. All right, read it again. John, a slothful man is compared to a filthy stone, and everyone will hiss out. To him, his disgrace. Right. We gonna ain't trying to deal with you, cause you you gonna like you filthy. You ain't took a bad thing. You know how long, right? So we ain't trying to deal. It's like you you're a filthy person. We ain't trying to deal with you on a physical level or on a spiritual level. All right. I, I got a scripture. Uh, it's more. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. So in verse two, a slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Every man that taketh his taketh up will shake his hand. Right. And this is. Yeah, kind of. So, uh, verse 2, it says, A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dung hill. And we know what dung is. Dung is a boo boo, crap, dookie. It's that kind of hill. Right. It's like uh, a dog that takes a shit and it just piles up. It right. says that a slothful man is compared to that. Okay. And then it says, Every man that take it up will shake his hand. So, everybody that shake his hand is going to have that shit on their hand. Right. So, what it's really saying is, uh, there's a saying in the world, you hang around six rich men, you're going to be the seven. You hang around six bums, you're going to be the seven. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with a slothful man. You hang around a lazy man, you're going you're gonna to be lazy next. You're going right. to see how he be lazy and how it, you know, it benefits him. And you're going to find ways to how it benefits you. Yeah. Another saying is, uh, birds of a feather flock together. So you like how the people you hang around. Right? So if you're around lazy people, you're going to expect to be lazy. Right? Ah, right, beautiful. Uh, can somebody give you Proverbs six and six? God, I, I got this uh, precept too. Right, bring it out. Uh, Which one? You <clears throat> Proverbs six and six. All right, God. Just second Peter. This is Second Corinthians thirteen and five. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Examine yourselves, mm -hmm. whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Right. How you how, how that how much you have to is in you, except ye be reprobate. Reprobate. Right. I was going to touch upon this. Well, right. right. Every day you got to examine yourself because you don't know when the most high can, you know, take that candle out, your, uh, out of your spirit. You know, God. you lacking, the most high ain't going to be playing. You. Every day he mad at the wicked. So if you are here playing with the most high, hey, man, he ain't dealing with you right there. So, you, hey, you got to examine yourself every day because the most high, not, hey, man, we need the most high. Right. 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 So uh, also another thing of examining yourself, when you're doing this every day, this would be a good practice you to be in when you practice this every day be repetitive mm -hmm. every day examine yourselves every day you know uh, where you'll fall or you know when you're falling and you'll know where you're falling and you'll know how to correct yourself next time uh -huh. so you don't want to stumble or if you do stumble you examine yourself daily so you can find out that hey look this is what uh, Paul did this is what Paul did to correct himself this is what Hamashiach Yahweh Shai did being our perfect example Right? He's, he was our, he's our Lord. He's our perfect example. So this is who we are supposed to follow. Right. So this is what he did. So I can not make the same mistake. He didn't already tell me how to walk. Show me how to walk perfect. Right? Show me how not to stumble. Okay? Beautiful. Right. I get that. Uh, God, this is Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Right. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. 
consider her ways and be wise. Like it. Hey, if you look at on the, if you go see what ants do, right? They constantly moving. They constantly working. They got stuff on on their backs. They make sure that they getting their job done. Uh-huh. But you look in the world, you got men, women, and child. They out here just resting. You know, they get off. Of, they get off of work. You know, they trying to you know chill. But you got an ant constantly twenty four seven. They working, right? No matter what what season it is. Continue. So, so it's making reference to an ant. So you can learn a lot from an ant, exactly. right? The smallest, one of the smallest creatures, one of the smallest creatures, the most high created. So uh, he said to examine the ant, look at the ant. You don't see an ant going and taking another ant to, and working at another colony. All right. Those ants work at the same colony. They don't go and, and, and uh, uh, colony hop. Right? They're not ant. hopping from colony to colony. Black ant working with the red ant. Right. They're not doing that. They sticking with the ant. They sticking with the, the colony that they uh uh you know started with. Uh, you know, there's no flip flopping, there's no uh back and forth, that causes confusion. Right. Right? Outcasts. Right? Go ahead. Tom it says, which having no guide, oversee, right. or ruler. Right? Yeah. Right. So provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So, hey man, they already preparing this up before the harvest is coming. They're making sure when it's when it get cold, they already have the food, right? So they already can be prepared, right? That's how you gotta be. Uh, as us, we gotta be ready. Make sure when the Sabbath come, we make sure we prepare ourselves. So when that day come, we already be ready. So we don't have to be work, uh, going out there breaking the Sabbath, right? So it's telling you, hey man, you need to hurry up and harvest and get everything situ- uh, situated. Uh, it's continue. It's- how long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? What verse is that? Nine. All right, so read it again. Fine, it says, How long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Right, and that could be on a carnal or a spiritual level. Because, like, on a carnal, like, you, you sleeping, right, all 12 hours. I mean, you missing a half of the whole day. You basically missing a whole day, your, uh, a whole day, right? But on a spiritual level, hey, you ain't in these scriptures. You lack it. Hey, man, you can be, you can be missing a bunch of information that the Bible is telling you and all the prophecies is showing you, hey, we in the last days and we need to come on and get up out of this. But uh, continue. God, verse 10. Get a little sleep, mm-hmm. a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. All right. So, hey, just you don't need to be out here sleeping so long. Hey, a little sleep, hey, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands. All right. So you need to just let you know, hey, in this walk, you got to keep you pushing, keep you pushing. Right, keep reading. God, so shall thy poverty come as a one as one that travella, and thy want as an armed man. God, uh, with that, can you give me Proverbs twenty four and thirty? God, so I, I want to break down a little bit. So it says it tells you in verse seven, which having no god or overseer. So the ants, they have a queen ant, but they at the end of the day, the ant don't even have a god or overseer to tell uh, the other ants what to do at the end of the day. Man, these ants do this. On their own will, because they know the Lord put them on them, the on everything to know to do their job. Right. So how much more us having a ruler and an overseer, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, who told us in uh, Luke chapter twelve, because we know the will, we know what our will is to do, but that's why he tells us to go look at the end, because a lot of brothers in the nation of Israel is very lazy, man. They don't want to do the work. Right. They rather they think that they can just wait for the kingdom and then this is gonna come to them. As long as they got fringes on, man. They really do not go out and make their bodies live and sacrifice like these ants do. Mm-hmm. These ants be getting stepped on, water, they get rained on, they get uh, you know, you got kids playing with ant hills. You they risk their life harvesting. Mm-hmm. So it, we supposed to do the same thing, make our bodies live and sacrifices. So this is Luke chapter twelve and verse forty seven. Uh uh Verse 47, it says, And that servant which knew not his Lord's will, what is the Lord's will? To follow the law of his commandments right. and uh, teach, uh, be a light to the rest of the world, which is to teach the rest of the world the law of his commandments. Man. Be a light to the rest of the world. It says, And that servant which knew not his Lord's will and prepared not himself, uh, we out there harvesting, getting ready. It says, uh, Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. And they don't, this is a parable. So we know it's talking about getting put to death. It says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. So, and if you, even when you look at ants, sometimes ants are, you see some ants, you'll be like, damn, that ant is alone. And he don't know what the hell going on. But the rest of the ants, like the brother said, is what they colony. They're, they're, they're following exactly what they're supposed to be following at the end of the day. 
is in symbolic to humans. For unto whom so much is given of him shall be much required. And to him men have committed much of him they will ask the more. So as much scriptures, much wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you have, you should be putting that forth towards the church or the Lord at the end of the day. And if you're not doing that, you're going to be beaten with many stripes. Simple. So going back to uh, Proverbs 6 and 6, which having no guide nor overseer, and then you uh, drop down uh, verse 10, get a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. It says, so shall thy property come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And that's the same thing dealing with the Lord. He said when he returns, his reward is going to be with him to give every one according to their works. So if you're not doing the work, it's going to be like the same thing. You're not going to receive anything. You better hope you don't go in the lake of fire. Huh. That's all right. So, and again, the scripture is making reference to an ant. So, we know that your, uh, the most high uh, wisdom is in every moving thing. So, don't think you can't, lose, you can't learn a, 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 good, a great lesson from something so small, right? So, it's giving reference to an ant, and it's telling us to go learn from that ant. Because we know ants work. They're very hard at working, right? And they're, they're good at it. They're good at what they do. The most high put that spirit on them to do it. And wisdom, you can learn. You can learn from them, right? So you said uh, Proverbs no, twenty-four. You, can, you don't have to get that. I was going to get this right. This is Proverbs chapter twenty, verse four. All right. Proverbs twenty-four. Then God, this is Proverbs chapter twenty, verse four. The right. slugger will not plow right. by reason of the cold. <laughs> Therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. All right. So a slugger, he plow, and what is a plow? They work, right? He said the slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, shall he beg and harvest. So you know, hey man, a lazy person ain't gonna work. You know, you ain't working. You're not gonna. You're not gonna achieve nothing. You know, if you don't work, you ain't gonna eat. So if you ain't gonna do nothing, hey, you're telling you're not gonna have anything, right? So then he said, therefore shall he beg and harvest. So you got, and I wanna say this. You got like, like I was saying, like you got people, a lot of bums that would beg for change, right? They trying to ask for things, but you're not gonna get it freely. Right, you're not gonna make it if you're out here asking for stuff. So like, you know, if you ain't working, you're not gonna eat. Hey man, that's why I just like you gotta you gotta work for this, especially in this truth, man. It ain't it ain't easy. It's it's gonna be hard coming out to this. labor. Hey man, that's why he says go out on the highways and byways and bid to the marriage so they can come in for this. He's telling them to feed feed my flock. Mm, let me get that right quick. All right? He tells you, yeah, I wish I said that specifically. He said, Hey, you love me. Say like feed my feed my people, man. Mm -hmm. Did he said it three times. Yep, yeah. said it three times. And that's just the melted in us, uh, Peter brain. Like, hey, really do this. You don't get to sit at home and do and play video games, man. Yo, man, whatever brothers be doing at home, man. Other than going out to the highways and byways. Some brothers be like, well, we're not supposed to go out on Saturday. Oh, on the Sabbath day. Well, well, I can show you a script right now where your house shot went out on the Sabbath and teach. That's when he went out and teached on the, on the Sabbath. It keeps you from doing being idle and keeps you from doing dumb right, stuff, man. Right. But not to get off topic, this is uh John 21 and 14. This is now the third time that Yahweh Shah shewed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Right. So when he had dined, Yahweh Shah said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he was talking about the food that they was just eating. Mm -hmm. He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. All right. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? <laughs> Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time. But Peter like, Damn, Lord, I, I just answered you twice. All right. He says, was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yeah, how shall I say unto him? Feed my sheep. Right. Hey, man, the most high, he telling you, hey, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. He ain't going to stress enough. Uh, Come. Now, you can get a First Timothy 5 and 8. He got it right Come. there. Book of First Timothy. Yeah, get that. Uh, book of First Timothy, chapter five, verse eight. First Timothy, chapter five, verse eight. But if any provide not of his own, right. and sp uh, so like that. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, specifically, no, especially yeah. for those 
of his own house, right. he had he had denied the faith, and is worth worse than an infidel. Right, hey man, most high said you are worse as an infidel. Basically, he's saying you worse than a person that don't believe. Right, if you don't provide for your own, right, bro. You're not gonna, hey, you're not gonna make it, man. Your family gonna, they, they ain't gonna depend on you. They gonna be working. They gonna be looking at the white man like, hey, feed me, right? That's what they, that's how, you know, our women in the world, they, they work, they depend on the government, right? DHS, DHS, right? Yeah. Trying to make stuff Food happen. stamps and daycare and all these exactly. different things, man. So they're saying, hey, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those in his house. So especially in your the people that's in your house right now, if you're not providing for them, right? It's a lot here. He said, uh, his house, he have denied the faith, right? Yeah. Man, you gotta hey, and it's spiritual as well, man. If you ain't out there providing for your for, uh, for Israel, you deny the faith, that means you don't have faith. You know, you ain't you're not gonna make it if you're not out there telling them, hey, repent because they ain't they, they they your people. So I can kind of preach that too. Hey, it's more in it. Is worth an infidel. That's what that was. That was it. All right. Yeah, here, 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 here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the word infidel means non-believer. Right. So right. It, it's he's saying, hey, if you don't do this, you worse than you worse than somebody that don't even believe the Bible. Exactly. Atheist. Exactly. What we call today, atheist. Mm -hmm. So worse than an infidel. That's what he said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is First Peter chapter. Um, let's start at verse three. Yeah. Let's start at verse three. Yeah. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So if you come into this truth and you desire to um, to teach the people, you desire to um, to have the Most High work through you uh, uh, to help your brothers and your sisters, you first, it's telling you, you first got to know how to rule your own home. This is where the trick, this is where you, you get a lot of uh, understanding of the scriptures, like uh, teaching your children the scriptures, uh, um, teaching your wife, uh, you know, scriptures like that. So a lot of times, like, like, I, like it says, let me read it again. It says, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Yeah. Right? So how shall he take care of the church of God? You got to first learn how to rule your own home. Right? That's how you that's that's yeah. where it comes from. You gotta learn how to rule. You gotta learn how to get your get your family members in order and tell them. And we know not all of them are gonna hearken to it. Right. We know that. So you gotta be patient. You gotta know how to be patient. You gotta know how to be diligent, consistent, know how to work that word in. When you see an opportunity to apply a scripture, apply it. It's the same way with the most high God's house. Right. Same way. All right, go ahead. scripture. Kind of, this is Revelation 3 and 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Right. I would thou were cold or hot. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, I would rather for you to be one or two, cold or hot. Right. You can't be both. Mm -hmm. There's no gray areas with the most high. It says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, mm -hmm. I will spew thee out of, thy, out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. So, hey, in this truth, you can't be lukewarm. You can't be halfway in. And you like you can't be in the truth and in the world, right? That's lukewarm. You're not gonna make it. The Most High gonna right? He gonna put you to death, right? We already know that Jacob's trouble is like rising. It's coming to pass. Like everything is coming. We got other nations coming against each other, and you want to be lukewarm in these last days? Nah. The Most High told you he you you would rather for you to be cold or hot. Mainly he wants you to be hot because if you if you're an Israelite, he wants you to hey, he wants you to prosper. He wants you to be on on spot. He wants you to be on fire pretty much. Right, so he don't want you out here lukewarm. If you lukewarm, hey, that's the same. Uh, that's the same. He gonna be the same way towards you. He gonna give you that same energy. Right, he ain't gonna care. The same way if you don't care about him, hey, he gonna show you that same energy. But like with that, that's the, uh, I like to give all honors and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashem, Yahusha. And like the Elder uh, General always say, death to America. Shalom, 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 Shalom.